You see, the droplet model works. The experiment works. The reactors produce transuranic elements and their properties obey the predictions of Bohr and Wheeler. And everything would be fine if not for one circumstance that turned everything upside down. The Americium anomaly, which was discovered here at FLNR in 1962, when we were doing an experiment, I myself was a participant in this experiment on the synthesis of the 104th element. Checking the model, the drip model, we realized that the 104th element is already on the outskirts of the model, that its half-life should be extremely short, that it will divide spontaneously and therefore that it is extremely difficult to obtain. But nevertheless, it was necessary to do the experiment in order to verify the model. And this experiment was done, as I said, in 1962 and was intended, as you can see, to end on the 104th element where a short period of spontaneous fission was expected. The experience was absolutely amazing, because we actually found it. The half-life was 10 milliseconds, but our joy was premature, because literally only a few days later, we found out that it was not element 104 at all, and not even element 100, and not even 98. It was the element americium, with atomic number 95, which has a half-life of 14 milliseconds. It was completely unbearable, I should say, because americium was already a known element. Its half-life was much longer than the element we hoped to discover and was measured as 10 to the power of 14 years. But here at FLNR, it was 14 milliseconds. Naturally, it means that we measured incorrectly and tried to find our mistake. While looking for our mistake, we came across another isotope which lives for 0.9 milliseconds. This was unfortunate, because the difference between what was already known about the same nucleus for the same type of decay differed from what had been found in this experiment by 24 orders of magnitude. Something was seriously wrong. And in fact, what was wrong? You see, if this americium does not have a barrier, due to some unusual circumstances, it would divide in 10 to the power of minus 19 seconds. Its experimental value has a barrier, of course, of 10 to the power of 22 seconds. And this is in the middle, neither one nor the other. It is significantly longer than the nuclear fission time, but significantly shorter than americium would have to achieve fission. Then the idea arose that it was probably an isomer. The word isomer means that the nucleus has some properties when it decays in the ground state. But if this nucleus was transferred to some excited state with other quantum numbers from which decay is forbidden, then this state is called isomeric. Isomers were first discovered in 1939 by Kurchatov and Rusinov. And here at FLNR, Kurnakov and his team were engaged in this, especially with polonium-212. In 1959, they discovered that polonium-212, besides the 8.78 mega electron volt alpha particle line, has another line of 11.65. But what is very interesting is that this is a lot of energy. From here, the decay is not shorter, but longer than from the ground state. If here it is 45 seconds, the half-life, then the known polonium is 0.3 microseconds. This one has a big spin. This means that the alpha particle cannot handle that big moment. It cannot handle the entire spin of 16 plus. 
And as Lev Abramovich Sliv from the Leningrad Physics and Technology Institute showed, this is due to the fact that this big spin is partially isomeric. The factor is 10 to the power of 14. The first reaction was this, that this is probably the spin isomer, only it refers not to alpha decay but to fission. But we very quickly had to throw out this hypothesis because spontaneous fission of americium-242 was observed during the capture of a thermal neutron, and there the spin is generally a half, which is almost no spin at all. It is not about the spin. And then it became known that not only is americium a partial isomer, but so is plutonium, curium, and even uranium. And our well-known and beloved uranium, which has lived for 10 to the power of 16 years by spontaneous fission, has a state that only lives for 0.3 microseconds. The difference here is 30 orders of magnitude. This phenomenon is an exception to the rule for americium. And it became the rule for all transuranic elements. And from 33 nuclei, two and sometimes three periods of spontaneous fission were observed, which does not agree with a liquid drop model in any way. A drop cannot have isomers. The drop cannot stretch, then stop, and then stretch again. It will either fail or not. And this was the first indication that the nucleus is not a drop. 